Hi, welcome to the Online Learning Center. I'm Coach Mark Evans. Our video channel uh, on YouTube, the Evans Coaching Channel, consists of six different categories uh, for swimming, cycling, and running. In the library, we cover uh, dry land exercise training, swimming, biking, and running technique, and question and answers. Uh, we have almost 600 subscribers on this uh, growing channel and I really appreciate all the people that are sending such great comments and emails uh, about the work that we're doing. Every, e every uh, video that I do is intended to be uh, as if I'm coaching you one-on-one -on -one. and uh, so it's just like what I've done over the last 20 plus years of coaching uh, primarily triathletes in terms of technique and assessing mobility and then creating training plans and so forth. Uh, today's video is, uh, you know, I'm going to talk about swimming again. You know, it's a very popular uh, topic and, uh, you know, there's always things that we're kind of playing with and, uh, and focusing on, but, you know, they really fall back to these cornerstone uh, kind of uh, uh, elements to your swimming technique that, uh, you know, I'm going to rehearse uh, some of the stuff that we've talked about in the past and then maybe add a little bit uh, new stuff today. But uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about bilateral balance, having both the left side and the right side uh, being more, have more symmetry, and I've talked about that. But, you know, one of the things that you can do is... Uh, to improve that is to simply bilateral breathe or taking a stroke uh, every or taking a breath every third stroke or uh, even every fifth stroke if you like uh, at, at low intensities. I'm also going to talk a little bit again about uh, uh, what you do during that in terms of uh, maintaining your headline position and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how to use your forearm and hand as part of the uh, paddle. So three different elements that I think fit really nicely into a uh, good swimming session uh, the next time you're in the water to work on your technique. And you really should spend a lot of time swimming at lower intensities to focus on your technique. So the bilateral breathing uh, is... Uh, uh, Commonly done, some people do it all the time, uh, and uh, it's a very effective tool in uh, helping develop the symmetry on both the left side and the right side of your stroke. But oftentimes when the intensities uh, are higher uh, into your zone three and zone four uh, uh, anaerobic threshold, race pace uh, kinds of efforts, it's generally found that you're going to be doing single side breathing. Uh, obviously you're going to need that oxygen in order to uh, keep the muscles working, uh, working uh, functionally. But what you can do to improve your, your symmetry is to uh, incorporate during your warm-ups uh, and uh, perhaps your cool downs and then mid uh, session sets uh, as follows. Warm up breathing every third stroke and keep it at a low intensity. Focus on keeping the left side and the right side of your body to be the same so therefore that your recovery on the right side and the recovery on the left side are actually the same movement and the same tempo same tempo like a metronome so above water of time and movement is the same as below water time and movement and that will create this kayaking uh, feeling that you're going to have and uh, uh, so that you're feeling like you're entering and exiting at a pre precise moment. When you're, when you're doing this bilateral breathing you want to make sure that that headline is good. We've talked about that in other videos where you're going to rotate with the body, the chin and the nose are going to be on the sternum, but you just want to go to single goggle, you know, don't turn excessively to get that bite of air. You know, the less, you, less head turn movement, the more streamlining and the less resistive forces that you're going to have and that's very important. 
The thing that you also want to do is obviously you can do the right side headline, left side headline, but during this bilateral breathing at, at a zone one, zone two intensity, uh, very light uh, perceived exertion, is you're going to want to feel that kick behind you. Some of, of the athletes, particularly the, the more neophyte or beginning swimmers, uh, are really struggling and pounding those legs to try to keep you know, elevation, keep their hips up in the water. And as you get more symmetry and more competency in your swimming stroke, you're going to find that that kick's going to calm down a little bit. And oftentimes you'll end up with a two beat kick. My hands are simulating what you'll do. You have a downward beat kick and then the other foot crosses over, downward cross, downward cross, downward cross, downward cross. So it's one downward beat per stroke. And no better time to do that than when you're bilateral breathing. It's just a perfect kind of combination to do that. Uh, when you're kicking, think about kicking the, the off of the toes and deflecting water back and away from you as opposed to uh, so much in the hip and so forth. And that sort of, sort of kind of ele or, uh, engages the hip and the, the knee and the, and the flexion and extension. But if you think of flicking off of that foot, that helps keep that body nice and high. And another thing too is that everybody has an individual body density, uh, you know, uh, capacity. Some is beneficial, some is not. So some are going to be a little bit lower in the water, some are higher. Uh, but developing as much symmetry that you can and tempo will help streamline you in the water really nicely. So remember having that goggle line on each side, left side, right side goggle line. Uh, good tempo in the recovery, both uh, and underwater pole, so they should be the same. And then think about kicking with deflection of that foot off the backside. So kind of kicking the water back towards the, uh, the pool, back towards, towards the wall that you just came from. Uh, lastly, uh, a little tip on what to do after you've gotten that high elbow open armpit that we've talked about here, you know, keeping that armpit open, not closing it down. But, you know, there's a lot of forearm here. And if you use that forearm as well to anchor and grab the water. So what I like to do is to feel pressure right there along the forearm here and not think so much about the hand, but just getting that pressure right on the forearm. And that seems to be a, a real nice tool to help you gather, hold, and purchase water and uh, sustain that continuum, that momentum of your swimming stroke that's uh, so important. So, uh, you know, including all of those things and then take these three or four elements that I've talked about and write yourself a workout. And uh, by 25s or by 50s, work on each one of these single aspects by themselves and then follow up uh, a 50 maybe with a, uh, another 50 incorporating all of the aspects or something like maybe 425's bilateral goggle line followed by uh, a 50 or a 100 swim where you're working on all the aspects. Uh, so it's very uh, useful to do deliberative practice uh, uh, techniques to help you make uh, your movements uh, better than the last and I'm hoping that this video helps you do that. Uh, again, we really appreciate your subscriptions. It's helping motivate me to do more of these uh, videos for you. And also, uh, you know, I hope you don't think this is uh, cheesy or anything, but our production for producing these does, you know, does cost us a little money to do that. And uh, if you'd like to uh, help us out a little bit, uh, you can go to PayPal and put uh, mark at evanscoaching.com and, you know, send us a buck, send us two dollars, something like that. If you find our videos useful, we would really appreciate it. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again. Thanks for watching. I'm Mark Evans. Take care.